Please don't fail. No. Hey gang, welcome to the kitchen. Today I'm going to be working on washing up dill. You can see how veggie matter free this lovely fleece is, but how greasy and dirty those tips are. So I want to keep this in lock form as much as possible. So I'm using a couple of methods. First, I'm going to do some in a tray and then um, we're going to try an experiment that absolutely terrifies me, but apparently it works. So we're going to try it and hopefully we won't felt any of the fleece. I'm only going to do a small amount of it with this new method because I have never done it and I'm worried it's going to felt. So I'm going to reposition the camera. We're going to get our first method going and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, I've shown these baskets before. I just lucked into them at a discount store and they're just plastic mesh baskets. So what I do with them is then I have these big bins and I use that for soaking my fleece. I'm going to have to give that a rinse before I use it. It's been living in my laundry room and picking up all the lint and debris. All right, let's make sure you can see. All right. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking that fleece that I sorted before, and I'm just taking a bunch of it, and then just gently pulling it into locks, just kind of loosening it up a bit. Because if we don't loosen up those tips a bit, they're not going to release the dirt. And then just laying them out in the basket. So this way I can put them into the water and take them out of the water without disturbing them at all. And just kind of aligning those tips. Now this would be a good time if you wanted to sort for length or crimp or whatever. You could just make each row um, very consistent. Like you could put all the same length and all the same crimp in each row. I'm truly not that particular. So I'm just putting them all in here. Now, because this is such a high grease fleece, I don't want to put a ton in here. So I'm just doing like a stack like to my first knuckle. So not very high at all. Now, I probably don't need to be this fussy. I can probably just take them in. Just pull them apart and pop them in. I'm just going to pull out that little chunk of ick that I see while I'm right there. Like, I'm sure this can be done much faster and not harm the outcome. Okay, so that's enough for that row. So the next row, I'm going to put tips to tips. Now, I don't know if this is the reason why most people do it, but this is the reason why I do it, because the tips tend to be smaller. If I put tips to tips, that gives them more room for the water to move around. And I have no idea if that's why people do it that way, but I have found in my experience that if I do tip to tip, it just works better. So let's get this next row in here. I've got the kettle boiling on the stove because we'll want to use hot, hot water for this to cut that lanolin. And I have my unicorn power scour. I did get a new jug and it was like 
I think $200 by the time I was all was said and done, but that's okay because it's the full gallon jug of it and it'll last me forever and it does the job so well that I just don't want anything else. Like, look at how gorgeous this fleece is. Can you see the crimp on that? It's so pretty. I, can't, I just can't wait to get spinning this. All right. Okay. So this one I've laid out carefully in a shallow form. But I have the second basket and I'm going to be a little less picky about this one and we're going to compare the results. So I'm just going to grab locks, put them in, I'm going to do this the fast way. I mean, I don't think washing to maintain locks, I don't think there is a fast way to do it. There's just faster ways. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, I've got this lovely run right here that's pretty much already laid out. So I'm just going to straighten that out a bit and just plop her in like that. Take that out. You can see there's some tips here that are out of alignment, so I'll just pull that up. Oh, it's a whole chunk. Look at that. So then we can take this piece, peel it off, sort it out, and plop it on. All right. Next. There's another run, so I don't want to go tip to butt, so I'm going to go butt to butt. <laughs> butt to butt. They're dancing to cheek. All right. <laughs> My sense of humor is so juvenile. All right, here's another chunk. So we'll just plop that in there. We're going to go tip to tip again. Now, because he was coated, you can see how we get this bend. I'm assuming that's from the coat. Or it could be just from packaging it in a bag and stuffing it in there. Who knows? But I'm just kind of trying to straighten that out so that the tips are open to the water. I'm just going to pull that out. Pull that out. Put it into the not quite tidy pile. Now, as much as I want lots, I also don't want to be here all day. For the majority of it there's going to be portions where i'll want to uh, be very careful now here's an interesting bit i'm assuming this is from up near the head like the top knot area and it's got such an interesting crimp happening here that i definitely want to get this washed up so i'm going to put that right there one here put this one here and this one here all right so that's probably enough there I don't want to go too deep we want it to be able to uh, move around a bit let the water circulate all right i'm going to get my wash bath ready and i'll be back all right we have three gallons of 140 degree water and uh it's a half a tablespoon of power scour per gallon of water let me double check that. That might be a second wash. To scour fleece, one tablespoon of power scour mixed into two gallons. So that would be half a tablespoon per gallon. I have three gallons. I've added a tablespoon and a half. Or do I have four gallons? Three gallons. I'm doing well today. My brain is fully functional. 
So now we have our two trays of fleece. I'm going to put the one with the most fleece on the bottom. And I'm going to squish it down with this one. Um, where's my spoon? There's my spoon. And I'm just going to push this down, make sure I don't even have to push it down. It's under there. But I'll just give it a little taps on the ends. Now remember, got to be careful. There's heat and soap in here. We don't want to add agitation or we're in trouble. So what I'm going to do is put this lid from my electric fry pan on the top, which is going to kind of weigh it down. Hey, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. All right, 15 minutes, and that's starting now. All right, so we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and see how it's doing and get ready for our second wash. I'm already heating some water. I'm going to do two kettles of hot and then one kettle of tap water. Let's see, uh, four, eight... So that would be one gallon of boiled water and then two gallons of hot tap water gets me about the right temperature. So we shall return. All right, second bath is all made up. Oops, I just dropped my thermometer in there. Oh well. And here's how it looks after our first bath. You can see the tips are still absolutely atrocious, but they were, oh, there's my spoon, they were filthy to start, so that doesn't really surprise me. So what I'm going to do now that they've had time to soak and soften up a bit, I'm just going to give them a little bit of a jiggle. My money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. I'm sorry. Too much TikTok. Just giving a little wiggle between those tips. Careful not to agitate. And then lift it out of the water. Yeah. I mean we could scrub at them, but I'm not going to right now. And here's our other tray. And the tips are just about as bad on this. I gotta keep reminding myself this is a fine wool. Be careful. All right, now this time, I'm not going to put the lid on it, so I'm going to let the water circulate a little more and that's also going to let it cool, but that means I'll be able to handle it then when I'm done. This one, um, we'll do a rinse or two and see where we're at. My goal at this time is not going to be getting these tips clean because that's not happening, but if I can get the lanolin out, then the dirty tips we can take care of after. And I should quit sticking my fingers in this because it's really stinking hot. Now, because those tips are so dirty, I started mucking around. So I took my flicker and I flicked the tips open on this chunk. Now those two little pieces took forever, made a mess of my flicker and basically tore the fleece because the lanolin's still in it. So I did not like that method. <laughs> um, I hear people flicking, but I would think more with a cap brush maybe just to kind of loosen them up a little bit. So these ones here, I just went through and I just picked them open by hand a bit to kind of let that water get through more. And uh, we'll see if we can get those to clean up a little better. Uh, we have a few more ways of uh, cleaning the fleece. I have some here. I've just been kind of stapling out some of the finer crimped stuff. 
and we're going to try Judith McKenzie's method. That has me absolutely terrified, but she assures me it'll work. So she's the expert. If you've never watched a Judith McKenzie video, um, get any of her classes you can. She's brilliant. Um, she's a very experienced spinner and uh, she has a very calm, soothing manner. Not at all like me. <laughs> but regardless, um, this is the method uh, she used in three bags full, uh, which I got from Interweave, but I believe it's still available online. If I can find a link to the course, um, it would be a purchased course and it's like four or six hours or something, but she'll walk you through everything, takes you to a fiber festival, helps you select a fleece, you know, shows you how to select a fleece, take it home, then what do you do? How do you wash it? How do you card it? How do you spin it? Like all that stuff. She literally walks you through a whole fleece. So it's a very useful video and I've watched it probably three or four times, which for me is a lot because generally I buy these courses, I watch them once and then I go do my own thing. Go figure. But we are going to use some of these. I'm going to keep uh, stapling out some locks to use the Judith McKenzie method while this one soaks in its second bath. Um, I might reverse the trays too and put the smaller one on the bottom. Now this is going to get messy. Oh, not as bad as I thought. There we go. Alright, so I'll let that soak for another 10 minutes because uh, I've probably been blathering for five. And uh, we'll get on to the next one. Back in a bit. Alright, second bath is done. So here we go. We're going to start rinsing our fleece. So I think I'll give it just a couple little dips here. Hey! Oh, that must have stuck to the bottom of the basket. Just going to throw it on top. Push that down. Oh my, this one has become extremely disordered. So we're going to just, wow, how did you get all tangled up like that? All right, there we go. So. This does not do sh uh, poop for the tips. <laughs> so, I'm going to try the Judith McKenzie method. I'm going to push this back and let that soak. And while it does, we're going to take a piece of material. I just have an old sheet here. And then we're going to take our locks and we're going to lay them out. Now, I have never done this, um, so I don't know how it's going to work. Mosquito, missed him. Darn it, he'll be back. And we're just going to lay these out on our piece of fabric. Now again, um, you might want to have locks the same length, the same crimp, the same, you know, the same. Whereas again, I just kind of grabbed whatever. I'm just filling in these little gaps. All right, 
<clears throat> then we fold our edge over, slide that down a bit, and then we put, that was my phone, and then we put a second row of locks above it. Now she says when she started doing this, she would only do one row of locks per package, but as with all things fiber, you got to find a little more efficient way to do it. So she started doing tip to tip, two rows of locks. All right. And then fold that over and fold between the locks. And wrap it up in a nice neat little package. Fold your ends. And fold again. Okay. Now, we're going to take this. Here's the part that terrifies me. We're going to put this in water with some soap and simmer it on the stove. I did that. Uh, pretty sure this is going to felt, but this is all we have, we're just doing this little bit to see what happens. She's the expert. I mean, I'm sure if she can make it work, I should be able to make it work, right? Yeah. I wish that worked that way in real life. Here is our pot. And I have some water. All right, there we go. Now, just adjust you a little better. There we go. All right, I am going to turn the heat to high because the water is not hot. So we need to get it warmed up. And I'm going to grab my unicorn. So that would be about a gallon of water. So we can use up to a half a tablespoon or so to make the proper ratio. So I'm just going to put in a little bit there. Oh. Thoughts and prayers, guys. All right. So we'll put that there. And she says she puts a little bit in the middle because we're just doing a packet. And then a little bit on the top. And I'm just going to push that down under the water. Somehow I think she's more expert at this than me and that my results are not going to be like hers. <laughs> now she says usually she will do a bunch of these packets and put them in like a lasagna pan and simmer it on the stove. But uh, I might just might have a little bit too much water in here. So I'm going to take some out. There. Now it's not floating around as much. All right. Now I'm going to wait for that to start to simmer till it's almost boiling. And then I'm going to turn it down to low. And we'll see what happens. Are you scared? I'm scared. Now, she recommends this method because the water gets so hot, but she uses a detergent. So I don't know how it's going to work with Unicorn Power Scour, but we will find out. And I am going to set up for our next method of washing locks. I'm turning that to low now because I'm a chicken. <laughs> And I'm going to let that simmer. All right, it's still simmering. I'm just going to let that continue to do so. And we're going to start on another method. Now, I tried to find where I saw this method, and honestly, I can't find it. 
so I may be doing it wrong. I may be making mistakes. I'm going from memory. So if somebody knows who did this, and if there's a place where I can find a video I can link, let me know. So I need a bar of soap. So I have this spearmint, peppermint, and chamomile soap from Cabbage Patch Soaps. I'll try to remember to link her. Laura's very sweet. And my brother always gets me her stuff for Christmas, which makes me very happy. So what we do is, you ready for this? <laughs> I don't know if I am. We take a lock. And this is boiled water. So we dip it in the hot water and then we rub it on the soap. Woof! That's way, way, way too hot. I'm not going to be able to do this. Okay. I may have to put on gloves to do this. But we rub it directly on the soap. <laughs> I know. I've actually done this though and it doesn't felt. There we go. Now I can actually rub it. And then we use our second cup as a rinse water. So we just dip, dip, dip. Ay chihuahua that's hot. And then we rub it on the soap. Okay, see how clean it's coming? Can you actually see that? It's hot. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So you can see how clean that's coming. Now we have to do the other side because this is also our getting the lanolin out. So we'll give it a scrub on the soap. soap in there and then we rinse it okay chihuahua okay that's way too hot I'm gonna have to add a little bit of cool water to that otherwise I can't continue I'm gonna suggest that you not do this with freshly boiled water okay now, I don't want to bring down the temperature too much just enough that I'm not burning myself trying to play in the water okay ah much better I can actually touch it it's still very hot but it's no longer burning me All right so there's our first lock I'm going to lay it out on this microfiber cloth to dry and I'm going to grab another lock and we're going to go again so at this time I'm going to start with the base because it's the cleaner part. So we'll dip that in the water onto the soap. Gosh, this soap smells so good, guys. I wish they had smell-o-vision. You want to make sure that you get enough soap worked into there to get to all of that lanolin. Now, frankly, it's terrifying to be doing this part on, you know, Soap, hot, wet, it should felt. But last time I did this, it did not. Now, granted, I don't think I was working with the fleece quite this fine, so we'll see what happens. But again, we're experimenting, so I'm only doing small amounts, so if something bad happens, I'm not losing a ton of fleece. Now you want to keep your waters about the same temperature so you're not shocking it by dipping it into cold rinse water. All right. Now you can literally feel it in the lock as it fills up with soap. 
Oof, don't stick your fingers in it. There we go. So the advantage is as you rinse it, you can feel when the soap is out too, which theoretically means the lanolin is out. But you can see there's still a lot of soap in there. I think I ran into this problem last time too, is trying to get that soap out. Ouch. Okay, I need some fresh rinse water. So I'm going to need to boil up some more water. And while that's boiling, we're going to go back over here and check on our simmer. So this has become a little more than a simmer. We're almost at a boil, but let me just give this a press down. All right. I think that's probably simmered long enough. So I'm going to shut that off, move it to the back. Okay, some of these angles might be a little sickening, but, you know, deal. <laughs> so here we go. Here's our simmered packet. And I'm just going to kind of fish that out. And I'm going to put it into my salad spinner. Press some of that water out. Now I'm doing it this way because it's way too hot for me to handle. Dump that dirty water. Now, what I have over here is a grease trap for attaching to my sink in the basement for when I'm washing the fleece. So I dumped some of my wash water in there and I'm just letting it to sit to see if that will actually separate or if the soap keeps it suspended. Just a little experiment. All right. Let's see, just gonna give this a quick spin to get that dirty water out. See if it's cool enough. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> oh yeah, boys, that's warm. Now, because the risk for felting is always in going from hot to cold and never cold to hot, I'm going to put this on the stove and get it heating up before I put that in to rinse. And just an FYI, this has been sitting in my grease trap for probably a good half hour and all the lanolin is still suspended by that soap. So I don't see how that could possibly harm my pipes. But that's me. If you're concerned about it, don't do it. So far, I'm not concerned about it. And that is plenty hot. We are going to pop in our packet. <clears throat> I've got like eight diff different methods on the go here right now. All right, so we'll push that down. In, I'm going to shut off the heat and just let that soak for a little bit in there. as a rinse and we'll see what happens. So what I did was I transferred my dip water to my rinse water, rinsed out that lock and put it to dry. And now we're on to our next one. Dip, dip hot onto the soap. Oh, that's hot. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of cold to that just so I don't burn my fingers off. And we're gonna work the soap in. Oh, this soap smells so good. 
And honestly, this soap is a little easier on my hands than scour. <laughs> all right. So you can see we've got it all soaked up. It's completely saturated in soap. And we're going to dip it in our dip water. Give it a rinse. Until all the soap is out. There we go. I'm going to try doing a little bit of a bigger chunk this time. Give it a bit of a twist so I can hold on to it. Get it all wet. And then on to our bar of soap that smells so divine. I can't, I can't get over how good it smells. I'm just standing here like, oh yeah, baby, that's good. That's some good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm not a big perfume person, but I think because it's like spearmint, peppermint, and chamomile, they're all like more natural scents. So, okay. So by doing a bigger bunch, yes, I got more through, but it doesn't come as clean. You can see those tips are still really caca. They got the, the cuckoos in the tips. So we're going to re-scrub those. Now, I'm going to say don't use a whole lot of water in your cups because you're going to just like this one won't rinse any more water out. So we'll dump that, switch our dip water to our rinse water. Ouch. It's like the water becomes so inundated with soap that it just won't rinse anymore. And you need to freshen it up. We'll do a little bit more and then we're gonna stop and let it dry and see if we've managed to felt it here are the locks that i just washed by hand on a bar of soap i'm just gonna press them with the microfiber cloth and we're gonna put them out to dry and see if they felted which it feels like they might have <laughs> on the cut end this one's fine this one well, maybe not. It's so hard to tell sometimes when it's wet, especially with the finer crimp fleece, because it is going to cling together. So that one's got to go out to dry. And we will pull these trays out, throw them through the salad spinner, and then they'll go out to dry. And then we will take our packet off the stove, run that through the salad spinner, and take it outside to dry. Now it's a nice windy day, so all of this should dry up fairly quickly, hopefully, if it doesn't start raining. So when it's all dry, we can assess the different methods and see if there's one that we like or if they're all a big fail. So I shall see you in a while.